our today's topic is algae as food fodder and biofertilizers moving from ancient times to the present the algae remain a significant part of the earth's ecosystem algae in the oceans rivers and lakes of the world are thought to produce about half of all the oxygen produced on the planet algae are incredibly diverse group of organisms classified into red green and brown algae based on their colors and this is due to different pigments in their chloroplast including chlorophylls phycobilly proteins and carotenoids chlorophylls is the main photosynthetic pigment in algae uh, prototheca are a colorless species of algae that do not contain any pigment algae now provide about half of the planet's oxygen and directly and indirectly uh, give us all uh, of our food algae are also potential source of renewable biofuels first is algae as primary producers some 3.5 billion years ago prokaryotic life begin on the planet in the absence of oxygen the cyanobacteria blue green algae arose and begin releasing oxygen into the atmosphere as the waste product of chlorophyll mediated photosynthesis however the level of oxygen didn't rise significantly for about a billion years because exposed to iron and other metal in the surface rocks oxidized and consumed oxygen and because the massive ocean absorbed oxygen but about 2.45 billion years ago the level of oxygen in the atmosphere began to rise because the exposed mineral were fully oxidized and absorption by oxygen enriched upper layers of the ocean abated oxygen level then rose and the evolution of eukaryotic organisms began giving rise uh, along the way to human next is algae as food in order to fulfill the demand of growing global population there is constant search for new food sources about 90% of the food is obtained from land though aquaculture or farming of fresh water brackish and uh, sea water is uh, almost as ancient as agriculture its potential has not been fully explored among marine organisms algae appear to be one of the promising food reservoir uh, food uh, resources many of the edible forms are quite rich in proteins vitamins and minerals including iodine algae synthesize some essential polyunsaturated fatty acids which are rarely synthesized in high plants and uh, uh, animals algae grow rapidly and their uh, farming can uh, be carried out in fresh water and also in brackish water and shallow coastal uh, areas and also in the open sea therefore it is worthwhile to explore algae and algal products that uh, have potential food value the idea of uh, including algae in human diet is relatively new in india but um, uh, in meantime countries algae and algal products are daily consumed uh, along with uh, other food items the consumption of seaweed by coastal japanese people dates back to 600 bc and uh, by chinese 6th century ad about 160 species of algae are used as commercially important food sources some are like spirulina spirulina contains about 65% proteins and also rich in carotenes it can be grown in fresh water uh, it is a uh, mass cultured in mexico taiwan and india because of its a high nutritive value it has been identified as a source of single cell protein uh, as a suitable supplement uh, to the uh, to a vegetarian meal it can be supplemented in the diet of children to curb malnutrition uh, prevent uh, uh, means uh, uh, to curb malnutrition it's prevalent in developing countries so the native of mexico and africa have long uh, used it so far attempts to popularize 
uh, it in India are not uh, successful due to different food habits and uh, tastes. How it can be cultured and um, uh, exported as health food to earn foreign currency. Another single cell and rapidly growing alga is chlorella. It has a potential food value as uh, it is rich in protein, lipids, and contain many vitamins uh, uh, in high concentration. Its nutritive value is almost equivalent to that of the soya bean and spinach. In Japan, Taiwan, uh, Taiwan and uh, other South uh, East Asian countries, it is grown as health food, having uh, uh, means cure all uh, properties. Taiwan alone produces uh, 15 tons annually. So after harvesting the cells are washed and pigments are uh, extracted. The dried algal mass then is ground and stored in powder form. So efforts to introduce chlorella as food supplement have not been fruitful in India as um, uh, its color and taste uh, are not uh, quite acceptable. Then seaweeds like porphyra, it contains 30 to 35 percent protein, 40 to 45 percent carbohydrates and is rich in vitamins. The mature porphyra uh, is harvest, harvested then dried and uh, pressed uh, into sheets. The sheets are then toasted and cut into uh, pieces and eaten uh, with rice, uh, with uh, raw fish and some uh, vegetables. In Japan, porphyra uh, farming is carried out uh, over 60,000 hectare area uh, in sea uh, by either placing um, concrete uh, blocks on the seafloor uh, to enhance seaweed growth or on bamboo cum rope network or uh, rough like floor uh, of uh, bamboos. Next is alga as fodder. Uh, alga like spirulina, chlorella and uh, many seaweed are commercially cultured for human consumption because of its uh, uh, high nutritive value. These can also be used directly as fodder for livestock uh, or supplemented with the regular feed. During World War I, when fodder was in short supply, seaweed were um, uh, tried uh, as cattle feed and uh, the quality of milk was found to be unaffected. Thereafter, seaweed-based uh, stock feed factories were set up in France, Norway, Denmark, Germany, and also in USA. According to some reports, uh, the milk of cows fed with seaweed is rich in fat content than those fed with conventional fodder. Uh, the seaweed are uh, used either directly as fodder for livestock or added in powdered form to the regular feed of cattle, uh, pigs, then sheep, fish, and poultry. In India, spirulina has been grown on uh, wastewater in Lucknow, Nagpur, Varanasi. It is fed to fish, poultry, and cattle. Uh, the aim is to improve health and productivity of the animal. Next is algae as biofertilizers. With increase in population, it has become necessary to increase the yield of crop uh, plants and uh, this has resulted in large scale use of chemical fertilizers. It is only recently that people have realized the harmful effects of such fertilizers on environment, particularly on the soil. So chemical fertilizers are produced in factories from non-renewable sources like crude oil and natural gas uh, which may not be available after some time when exhausted. Being soluble in water, much of the fertilizer added to the crop is literally washed down by irrigation water or rain uh, and reaches the water sources like ponds, lakes and rivers. So this brings about the growth of algae and bacteria leading to severe water uh, pollution. Besides, such undesirable side effects, chemical fertilizers affect the chemical and physical properties of the soil so as to make uh, it soon unfit for uh, growing crops. Traditionally, uh, farmers use farmyard manure produce, uh, produced from agricultural waste, although they are good as soil conditioner but are poor in nutrients. So, in recent years, a number of organic nutrient-rich fertilizers of biological origin termed as uh, biofertilizers 
have become popular. So some of the algae biofertilizers uh, uh, that are being uh, developed and used successfully in India and abroad, like seaweeds. Uh, in coastal areas where seaweeds are uh, washed ashore, they are collected and uh, uh, com composted like farmyard manure. Seaweed compost is rich in minerals like potassium, phosphate, uh, phosphate sulfate, and trace elements. Several vegetable crops like uh, uh, brinjal, uh, then uh, cucurbits, fruits like lemon, and trees like palm and papaya are found to be benefited uh, by this manure. Extracts of seaweed uh, used for the germination and seedling growth of uh, red gram, tomato, and other plant by uh, some Indian workers, they use this. So such extracts are commercially available in some countries uh, under the name of um, uh, uh, algae food in Norway and uh, SM3 in England. Blue-green algae as biofertilizers. Whenever sunlight and water were available, nitrogen-fixing cyanobacteria can be grown in summer in shallow um, puddles or um, uh, metal pans. The thick mats that dissolve within a week or so are dried and kept in bags. And this is literally growing when uh, own uh, means um, growing one's own fertilizer during the summer season when the field is empty without the crop. Such dry algal material, it is a rich source of nitrogen and phosphorus besides several other important elements. Now, agriculture departments uh, supply kits to the farmer to uh, grow their fertilizers. So, this is very popular in rice growing area of South India. So, nitrogen fixing cyanobacteria are also directly added to the rice uh, field. Uh, paddies immediately after the transplantation of rice seedlings. So, they multiply rapidly and supply directly or by uh, decay nitrogen and other uh, nutrients uh, to the rice plants like azola. Azola is a water fern and very common in ponds all over India. In China, Vietnam and uh, other Southeast uh, East Asian countries, it's grown and uh, used as fertilizer and also as feed uh, for cattle and poultry. So, Azola contain symbiotic nitrogen fixing cyanobacteria and avena in the leaf pockets and grow rapidly when inoculated in rice fields. It can also be grown uh, separately and uh, composted, stored and added to the crop when needed. Thank you.